Welcome to People. I'm Shirley Lin. Today I have Fanny Xu in the studio with me. She is the director of Cortronic Culture and Arts Foundation, and、uh, we're going to hear a lot of her stories about、uh, how she spent 18 years abroad and how she came back to discover、uh, Taiwan through a very special way. So、um, let's talk to Fanny. Hi, Fanny. Hi, Shirley. Hi,、yeah. everyone. Hello. Hello. All right. You spent 18 years abroad, and you、mm -hmm. were uh, abroad uh, starting in high school.、Mm -hmm. Where did you go, and what did you do?、Um, at age 15, I was sent to Canada to study in Vancouver High School, and then I went to college in Toronto. And after I finished college, I went to New York and spent 10 years、uh, studying and working there. It's a, I think I still think it's the best city in the world for people、um, in our、arts. profession. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. So,、um, what was your major specifically?、Um, yeah, it's an interesting story. A lot of people ask me now, how <laughs> did I get into the art business? Yeah.、Um, I think before,、um, when we were growing up in Taiwan,、uh, if you got a, if you got a with school. I don't think can ever imagine. I, I can't even imagine myself getting into the area、arts. of art. All right. Because、yeah. art equal poverty, maybe. Or <laughs> <laughs> someone actually said that to you. No,、before. I think it's just.、Uh, I think it's embedded in a lot of our thinking. You know,、oh. unless you're truly、um, passionate about art,、uh, you do have to take the consequences with you. Right. Yeah. What about your parents? What did they think about the well, arts? I think they've always been quite encouraging. I know we took、um, some art classes. Yeah. Yeah. And so they they gave us the options. But、uh -huh. I think it's just myself thinking. If I want to be able to hold a job and support myself, art may not be a good. Uh, profession、yeah. to get into, right?、Yeah. But、uh, I think that's why it's so amazing.、Uh, when we, when I left Taiwan to go to Canada and study,、uh, one of the、um, art art class、uh, mm -hmm. art classes、uh, teacher in art class asked me one question when we、mm -hmm. were thinking about our major in college, and she told me, "If you're so、uh, passionate about art, why can't you think about getting into the art profession and make it in?" Make it as part of a, your career. Before that, I don't think I actually、really? seriously think about it. So you think you got your interest into arts because the, the inspiration when... of the teacher? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, in Canada. In Canada. Yeah. Yeah. So I thought about taking an art studio. Then you become like a, a, an artist.、Um, but her her words、um, reminded me. Um, or inspire me to look into other options, and that's how I found a program called Arts Management, which combined art、uh -huh. history and business management. So, <laughs> and that was a time when、um, I think the programs just started、um, in the West. People realized, you know,、um, they need people who are in both sides,、yeah. who have a very solid business training、mm -hmm. as well as a solid art background. Oh. Yeah, to run places like museums or galleries. So this teacher must have discovered something about your talent in art. Were you into drawing or photography,、yeah. or what was it? <laughs> that was a, another interesting story. Yeah. When we first、um, went to Canada, of course, our English English is not good enough, but we are very good in vocabulary. That's the upbringing in Taiwan. We have all the cram school. And <laughs> yes, we memorize <laughs> all the vocabulary. Right, yeah. Right. But of course, speaking and、uh, writing are not、um, the best. So first, we we were sent to art classes because that's the class we don't really need to talk too much. Huh? No, <laughs> so, really? Yeah, yeah.、Uh, not all classes. Yeah. But,、uh, one or two art classes. Cause, uh huh.、Um, in Taiwan, I think we 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 skip a lot of art classes. <laughs> For me, so it's like heaven. So、right. she can tell that I was, you know, very happy、um, in doing a lot of drawing and pen, painting, and also took ceramic classes. You know, pottery making. Yeah. Yeah, that's something you don't do.、Wow. <laughs> well, let me ask you: Did you ever get to make rings, rings? jewelry? Jewelry. I I I think I took、uh, classes later on metal. Yeah. yeah yes. I, I love know. That. Any crafts, the、yeah. handmade. You know, you actually create your. You know, with your own hands.、Mm. I like that because I, you know, I spent、uh, my high school years, junior、mm -hmm. high and high school years in Japan, and、mm -hmm. I went to an international school.、Mm -hmm. And actually, for art classes, we got to play around with metal. And、yeah. I remember making、Jewelry、a ring, makings. very most simple kind of ring. Yeah, you know? it's the most amazing thing to、yeah. to to get a and work of art. 
by your own hands. Right. So that's that I think that's the 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 uh, excitement you get when you are um, doing art creation. Right. Yeah. Let's talk about um, you know just your experience in art galleries, mm -hmm. you know, antiques, especially Chinese yes. antiques and uh, <laughs> and auctions. Yes. I mean, you're young, and I couldn't imagine you understanding mm -hmm. Chinese antiques. antiques. Yeah. Uh, that's another interesting I know, uh, fact. Um, after I finished college in Toronto, so I know um, art management. It's a it's um, one of the career like I like to pursue. Um, so I applied NYU, New York University, and got into the master program. It's called visual art administration. So they get into a very specific field. They have performing arts administration. They also have visual arts administration. Uh -huh. So in that field, we study about how you manage an art gallery, or art auction, or even an art foundation. Mm -hmm. And so every day you read about, and it's all uh, more practical. Uh, training rather than theoretical, like writing a paper. So we That's read good. New York Times every single day, learning about the real situations facing by all those uh, organizations. And we talk about, we do case studies on the challenges and uh, opportunities that each museum or foundation or um, galleries faces. So it's a real life uh, experience and we also have to do internships in um, museums or galleries. Yeah. So um, I think I was very fortunate right after school, I was able to find a job working at an art gallery mm. uh, specialized in Chinese antiques. Wow. That can use my uh, language, you know, background sure. in Chinese, but uh, not so much about the Chinese art history. Because oh. <laughs> <laughs> I know back in Taiwan, we study about all those histories, but I probably didn't pay too much attention to that. <laughs> You're, you're being so funny yeah. here. But the memories, you know, it's just have to memorize all those facts it can be boring. <laughs> so I have to learn from scratch. But it's fun learning uh, by handling works of art. But of course, you reminded me all the stories we, we, we hear all the time when we're little, which is um, the, my boss would never know, including mm -hmm. like we, we handle... Um, your, your boss is Caucasian, right? Yeah, Not Asian. American. Right. He used to work for Sotheby's and uh, was the uh, uh, president of North America. Uh. So after several years working in, uh, in the auction business and in the in Chinese antique field, he left uh, the corporation and started his own gallery. Oh, wow. So um, most of his clients are collectors passionate about Chinese works of art, who's been collecting and learning about Chinese culture for over 20, 30 years. So right. it's amazing um, time, yeah. journey to be talking to those people while they're so much into Chinese philosophy and right. culture and to be working with them. Yeah, yeah, I just realized that actually the customers that you're dealing with while you work in the gallery uh, are actually um, Caucasians, Americans, mm -hmm. foreigners, yeah, or Europeans. who are foreign to yes. the Chinese history or arts. Yeah. And so, so that makes you stand out for your role. Mm -hmm. It becomes very important in your position to explain and yeah. you know and impresses them. Yeah, I think it's a mutual yeah. stud, mutual learning. You right. know, I, I tell them stories I know about. Uh, you know, for the moon festival, for example, uh, we we enjoy the moon with your family and we look at uh, Chang'e uh -huh. and the rabbit on right. the moon. Stories like this, they 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 depict on the Han Dynasty bronze mirror. Uh -huh. But people look at this story, they, they don't understand the uh, meaning behind it. Right. I was able to tell them, you know, that's everybody knows that when we were a little kid, that's yeah. what we were told. Yeah. So there's a lot of, um, um, yeah, stories, children's I know. stories that and we they know. Get, yeah, they get fascinated with these kind of stories. Absolutely. Yeah, because yeah. I was thinking that if you're dealing with Chinese customers, mm -hmm. they might even correct you for right. <laughs> So that's a good excuse, yeah. <laughs> I can uh, you come up with a story and you can never know if it's real or not. <laughs> well, of course, I mean, you're very professional at this. I'm sure that, yeah. you, know, you know, we don't fool, yeah. you know, we don't fool them. But, yes, yes. But uh, uh, it's a very scholarly research. We have an amazing uh, library. You know, we spend, uh, invest a lot of money into um, research books, so yeah. cataloging correctly. Right. Yeah, so it's wow. a fascinating time. I was there for seven, eight years working did you, in New York. Uh, did you have time to come with a book? Uh, every a year book we do a 
special exhibition. Yeah, so that's because a once a year annual event during mm -hmm. the Asia Week in, in New York. It's a one or two weeks uh, of uh, all Asian art collectors will come to the city of New York. You have nonstop um, gallery yeah. openings and uh, auctioned. Um, that wow, is a one-stop shopping for everybody. Yeah. So during that time, we come up with an, uh, a special uh, catalog, exhibition right. catalog. For In English and Chinese? or Both. Yeah. Both, yeah? yeah. Oh, yeah. tough job on you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a fun time. But it's a fun, yeah, doing yeah. what you like the most. because yeah, we gather important pieces and put it together under a theme, yeah, and for people to come and mm. enjoy. Yeah. I, I have very bad memories. I can't imagine you mm -hmm. studying up on Chinese antique, right? Yeah. And then trying to remember where this pottery, what dynasty this pottery is mm -hmm. from, or mm -hmm. what year this you know, vase is from. Yeah. How, how do you do that? Yeah, I think it's an experience. A lot of people okay. ask me, how do you become a specialist in Chinese antiques? Uh, is there books or is there a video that they can uh, uh, do a, a cram? on a study yeah. on a crash course perhaps right. but um, I think it's difficult to just uh, train your eyes with reading mm. uh, what's fascinating about the job is the hands-on mm. you get to touch uh, the works of art uh, really? versus it's all right yeah I mean most of the times when you go <laughs> to we learn. Museum, I know you're not exactly. supposed to touch you can only watch yeah you know, that's why we eyes. advise people who who might be interested in collecting is to to learn from the best and to train your eyes mm. um, of course going to museums are important because mm. those are works of art have passed the time yeah the challenge of the time and they are timeless so you can train your eyes by looking but mm -hmm. I think that's only step one. Yeah. But um, to be able to to hold the piece, works of art, and to to understand it, I think it's the best way to learn and mm. train. And once you train your eyes, you know what's the best, and then you can tell. Right. Good and uh, really, good huh? And bad. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. What about what about auctions? Mm-hmm. That's another fascinating place. I think that's places. a very tense <laughs> thing, you know. Well, maybe you're not the one who kind of takes up the chop and kind of <laughs> no, uh, calls I don't out. The auctioneers. Yeah, because yeah. I think that's a really a, a very tense kind of moment. But yeah. how, what's what's auction yes. like? I mean, what's what was the what was like? the role that you played at these uh -huh. auctions? You yeah. yourself? Yeah, I worked with uh, Sotheby's for one year, and I was the Chinese specialist. Okay. So what you do is uh, you do business uh, getting. So uh, you ask collectors or dealers to consign works of art to the company, and we hold auctions several times a year and all over the world, including New York, Hong Kong, Paris, and London for Chinese works of art. You so travel to these places and hold the auctions the there, yeah. and you the actually company, transport yes. all these art pieces? Mm -hmm. That is a lot of work. I, <laughs> I thought you only hold auctions in New York. No, it's but you all actually around go the world. That's only for Chinese and uh, works of art. But there's okay. several. They have several locations all over internationally. Oh, okay. Yeah. So a specialist job is to catalog the works of art mm -hmm. correctly, mm -hmm. um, uh, both in Chinese and, and English, and to give a proper estimate. Mm -hmm. and, and at the auction day, you know, all the collector will come to one room and um, bid the pieces um, the what they want. But before that, we have a preview mm. where, you know, um, people of interest might come in and handle the pieces yeah. and to examine the conditions. Because oh, you can, yeah. You're talking about these people who are not the one that buying the art pieces. They are both. I think both. the public can go, and then the uh, collectors who are interested in buying, yeah. of course, will do the preview session oh. before the action auctions actually takes place. Oh, I see. Yeah. Then I think there are also people who who need to be there, mm -hmm. um, traveling with you to take care of the art pieces, mm -hmm. to clean it up and polish it. Of that course, too. and to be put on display. So it's a huge crew. Of How course. How many people go with each auction? I mean, um, we travel with you to um, these auctions. I think each each office they have a local uh, department that handle the the sales. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. Okay. Oh, so you actually have. Um, branch offices at all yeah. these different all major the, cities. Yes. Oh, yes, I yeah. get it. Oh, all right. <laughs> but especially we'll send there because you yeah. might need to meet, understand the client's needs and you might explain to them the conditions of the works of art and can give them uh, your opinions mm. on some of those pieces. Oh, I see. Yeah. 
Now, these buyers, when they, they're at the auctions, I mean, they don't get to touch the art pieces, can they? They can, of oh, they course. Can? Oh. They have to. With if gloves. you're spending over a million dollars. Because it's never shown in movies. I know. <laughs> that Maybe that's a secret. <laughs> You're spending that much money. I think oh, really? it's it's we always advise you have to see in person. But yeah. if you cannot see in person, you 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 have to uh, find a, a trustworthy uh, oh. specialist to to really yeah to examine oh, wow. it for you. Okay. Yeah. So that's one of the job is to write down the condition report to yeah. give care for examination to mm. give good advices mm. yeah, to oh, people wow. who might be interested in buying. Okay. Yeah. Well, I know that there was a certain program that um, actually persuaded Fanny to come back to Taiwan and discover Taiwan all over again from what she knew before as a girl. But uh, we're going to learn all about that and her other stories right after this. <laughs>